next act is uh, Vincent Brendan. So let's give him a big hand. All right, so uh, before I begin my act, I need a little bit of audience participation. I, I want to know, uh, just a couple hands here, what are you guys afraid of? Anybody? Turtles. Sea turtles. Sea turtles. Failure. Chainsaws. Chainsaws. Scott Baker. Heights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Up here, where no reflection looks the way I feel. That's a big one, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to women? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, I'm, I'm afraid of driving ever since, uh, ever since Paul Walker. <laughs> Princess Diana was the first one I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so I take I take the I take the bus, all right. And the, the bus is lovely. It's good for the environment. It's cheap. It's easy to make drug deals on. <laughs> all right. But but as y'all can imagine, the, the Reno transportation system, public transport, it's the people you find on it are sort of a mixed bag. Um, just a couple days ago, I, I got on the bus, and for whatever reason, it was a fully packed bus at 10 p.m. at night, and so I was forced to sit next to someone, which I don't usually tend to do. And the guy I was sitting next to was really, really a weird guy. Uh, he kind of looked like Jeff Bezos, the, the Amazon CEO guy, if he had like the certain, uh, how do you say, like, like the inability to look at something with both eyes in the same direction, <laughs> you know? And it was, it's only late September at this point, and he's wearing a full parka, like he's like an Antarctic explorer guy, and even in the weirdest thing, this is all completely true, uh, like a baby, he was cradling a small, bruised, overripe cantaloupe <laughs> as a child. And so, so naturally, I, I sit down on the bus and I'm doing the thing where I'm like on my phone trying really hard like not to look at this man in case like he stabs me or something or smashes me with the candle. I don't know, you know. And so it's going silent like that for about you know 15 minutes of bus ride, and we pull up to a bus stop, and the man kind of turns his head directly at me and it made like that squeaky noise that you know closets make when they open in horror films, right? And he looked me, well he didn't look me dead in the eyes, he put one eye on the side <laughs> and he tap, tap, tap on the, on the bus window and pointed at this really old guy, like just truly ancient, in like a gas station employee uniform who was just standing there like this, not moving at all. And he said, really eloquently, he said, that's Jeffrey. That's my friend. He's a really good man. And then he just got up and left. And I always I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I just kind of like looked down and I was terrified. And when I looked out the window, he just evaporated into dust. <laughs> Alright, I added that part. But, but you can understand why, I, I, I fully expect a lot of you young people are, are you know, not a fan of going on the bus. It's scary, right? So naturally, Reno needs other public transportation options. Have y'all seen the, uh, the line bikes? Yeah? Ah, oh, big stupid things, right? I hate them. I hate them. They're the, they're the perfect Silicon Valley invention, right? Because they took something old-fashioned, like a bicycle, and they slap a QR code on it for some reason. <laughs> and then it's really cheap, right? It's only a dollar to use, which would be really good for poor people, except poor people can't use it because you need a smartphone to use it. So naturally, that's good for the rich people too. And uh, it's eco-friendly, but in Reno, there's actually a really big problem where the poor people who can't ride these bicycles will just pick them up and toss them into the Truckee River. <laughs> and uh, Lion actually had to release a statement saying that they were going to increase patrols around the Truckee River to make sure people wouldn't throw bicycles out there. Which is why I love the city. Uh, but the line bikes are stupid. But there's something worse that the line company has, uh, more dangerous than the line bikes, really. And they're called the Line S electric scooters. All right? I saw these in, in Austin. There are these uh, big wheel titanium frames, death machines that ride at 18 miles per hour on the sidewalk and rip 
rich businessmen type that wear like salmon shorts and boats shoes. They just ride all over the sidewalks and they have no care for any pedestrians in their way. They'll just speed bump right over them. <laughs> so uh, when I was in Austin and you know I'm walking around looking at the bats or whatever you do in Austin, right? And you just see whole legions of these guys in V formation. Like they're the Air Force jets, you know? They all have totally sunglasses on. And they're riding down like they're the sons of anarchy. And it's terrible. And if they hit you, you're done. So that's perfect, you know? Uh, but here's the thing, here's the thing. These Lion S scooters are coming to Reno. They are coming soon. They're right now, right now in the city, there's a whole warehouse with about half a thousand of them just waiting to be deployed. And the only reason they're not on your streets right now is because of one mistake by the line company. In late September, and I was actually on the streets when this happened, they sent out all 500 or so of these line scooters onto the streets of Reno without notifying anyone that they were going to do it. They just dropped them everywhere. They didn't tell the city they were going to do it. The city didn't get to pass laws like, oh, you have to wear a helmet, or oh, you can't hit homeless people. <laughs> <laughs> but they just dropped them everywhere. These things are death machines. They're the biggest danger since, I don't know, heroin. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was scary. I, I was actually there, but one day they were out for like six hours before the city made them pick them all back up, and I just saw a guy immediately scan on right off and immediately crash into it. <laughs> and it, I, I know what you think, the tree didn't make it. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Can you imagine if we were able, if like other, if we just, can you imagine being able to have the power to just drop 500 of anything around a major city, just at will? Can you imagine dropping 500 machine guns just on the streets of, of a major town because you can? Lime, Lime is actually doing that in Mississippi right now. That's a pilot program for you. Come No Mississippi thing? Uh, no, actually dropping, dropping 500 machine guns in a random city, that's actually been the U.S. foreign policy for the last 50 years. <laughs> but, okay, enough about, enough about machine guns. Uh, mortality, mortality, uh, that, you know, the, the relentless realization that we're all mortal, scary, right? I don't, know, I don't know how many of you have had near-death experiences before, but for the first time in my young life, I, I had one, just uh, not, not even last week, maybe six days ago. And the bus system was down, there were no more buses for the night, I got out of work really late, and so I had to walk all the way down to South Reno, and it was raining, you know, it was raining a couple days ago, whatever. And it's dark, my phone was dead, and you just get that impending sense of dread. It's like uh, it's like the sixth sense, you know that Bruce Willis movie where he has uh, red hair? And he's walking, and it's so eerily quiet, and I get to like uh, one of those intersections where you have to you know, cross the street, right? And I'm about to cross, and just something pulls me and yanks me backwards, like, like the, like, I could feel my soul kind of like astrally projecting itself and then coming back into my body. And right as I was pulled back, a bus without its lights turned on just fume, you know, like whizzed past me, right? And I, I you know, I had like, a, you know, I was like, I was terrified. My heart was beating. I really thought I was dying. And I turned around to see like who pulled me back. And it was Jeff. Yeah! <laughs> Jeffrey David. He was a good man. He was my friend. Anyway, that's my story. Thank y'all for this.